Hi, welcome. This is session seven, and we're going to start talking about directed graphical models. And basically, this is the idea of how to represent our distributions, right? So, basic, we, we have the, the basic idea of px uh, given theta, right? Um, our question is, how can we represent these in a compact way? How can I express what this distribution holds inside? in such a way that I don't have to, to worry about um, a lot of the, the, the intricacies that is inside. So our main tool here is the chain rule. So we can talk about the distribution of these uh, B variables over here as applying the chain rule of the probability of one of them times the probability of the second given the first times the probability of the third given the first two, up to the probability of the last one, given all the previous ones, right? So I'm just applying the chain rule over here to represent this. And this is one of our, our particular um, uh, tools uh, that I, I uh, sorry, <laughs> this is the chain rule. So this is the particular tools that we're going to use. Uh, I'm just mixing up things here. Um, and this is one of them. And the other thing that we're going to use is conditional independence. So if you remember when we have three variables, we can say that X is conditional from Y given Z. And this implies, and it's a, and a strong uh, implication over here because we can go on forward and back, that PX, Y given Z is equal to p x given z times p y given z. So if both of them are condi are independent given z, that means like their joint is the multiplication of their of their marginal. So this is conditional independence, right? And we can use this uh, in conjunction with our uh, chain rule to uh, simplify how we represent our distributions in general. And our third, and this is not necessarily um, uh, uh, a need for, for doing the, the, the graphical models, but it helps to simplify our assumptions. And it is to use uh, some Markovian assumption within our data. And basically what it does, uh, it, it is to simplify the dependence. And it says that uh, except for the first, every any other of my 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 uh, my factors here within the distribution is just the um, multiplication of the previous one. Okay, so my pxi depends only on my pxi minus one. Basically, I'm just saying like this distribution has a memory of one. So this dependence in here, for instance, x3 only depends in x2, and this x1, it is independent from it. So I'm just kind of simplifying, and we can have different um, orders of these models. So this is a first order Markovian model, but uh, we can have any, any other order Markov uh, assumption. And we can use, like when we said that it, it, it remembers uh, these previous uh, steps, so we can call it like the, the memory size within the Markov model here. So, um, if we use this to represent, for instance, what type of things we can represent, right? We can have chains, for instance. So, x1 and x2 and x3. And what we have here is that the probability that they depend from each other. So, this is kind of a Markov assumption here. So, my density, my x1 up to 3 is what is the probability of x3 given uh, x2 times the probability of x2 given x1 times the probability of x1. So what I'm representing here is what is the independence and dependence relation between my variables, okay? So we call this the child. So this is a child of x2. So let's call it here a child of x2. And this will be a parent, right? So this will be the parent of x3. 
Okay. Just for but ter some terminology that we are going to be using uh, further on. But this can be as complex or as simple as you want. So for instance, I can just have this other type of relation. Uh, so this is also an example from the book. And you have um, this thing over here. So you have x1, x2, x3, x4, x5. And what, it's, what it tells you again is like, what is my density of this joint, right? Of my five variables. Well, if we just start naming them from the back, you just say like five depends on three, that four depends on two and three, that uh, two depends on one and three depends on one. I'm going to continue down here. Uh, I think I kind of squeeze it. X2 depends on one and three depends on one and then one is independent from the rest, right? So this is just how my, my, my density um, depends or behaves with respect to the other ones, right? And in here, we just like, we just call these uh, some, um, uh, e, like the order Markov, order Markov property, because in some sense, they, the parents come before than the children. So I can create some type of, of ordering in such a way that I can move from parents to child here. So from the parent to the child. And if I can move in, in that way, I say that this uh, path or way of, of moving through the graph is what we call the uh, order Markov, Markov property. So it would be useful later on when we say like, oh, maybe I just can uh, traverse this graph in such and such order. In, in, and that order is like, I'm will go from the parents to the children, okay? So basically this helps me because I can say that, the, that any node, it is independent from the predecessors without the, the parents, given the parents. So this is like what, what this property tells me. So for instance, I can say like the node S is independent from the node of the predecessors without the parents of this node, given the parents of the node, right? Oh, sorry. So these predecessors are defined as long as I have this order here. If I don't have the order, it doesn't mean anything, okay? So what are the things I can do? For instance, I can do a second order chain here. For instance, I can have this type of jump. So in this case, I have a, a first order, right? Each of those depend on the previous one. It is basically the same as this one, but I can add a jump from any other, every other uh, node. In that case, my probability of X1 given uh, to x4 is the probability for instance x4 given 3 and 2 so um, p3 given 1 and 2 and um, p2 well p2 just has uh, sorry x2 just has x1 and the probability of x1 right so I can define my density with respect of, of the previous ones and we can also define other type of things that are more complex for instance um, what we call an HMM and I may have some latent variables, for instance, some uh, process that I cannot observe. So this may be my set one, set two, set three. So it is hidden to me. And then these hidden states go to some observable states. So I can have some X1, X2, X3 that we observe actually. So in the notation of these uh, directed graphical models, we normally shade the things that we are observing and we leave uh, without shading everything that is latent. So these just represent my latent, my latent presentation. This is observable, observable, right? And I can construct in the same way as before my, my density and my density uh, it, it depends on the observables depend on the on the latent and the latent depend on on the previous one. So, uh, yeah. What else we can do? So, 
from here, we can also define, for instance, um, some stuff that we already worked in previous sessions, uh, naive base, for instance. If you remember, this is just the the joint of x and y. That is the py times the multiplication of future y's px j given y. All right. Or for instance, um, there are some applications using medical diagnosis. in which you can apply, for instance, um, the relation, or you can try to infer the relation between visible and hidden uh, factors within the, the patient data. So the visible factors are the symptoms, for instance, and your hidden factors are the diseases uh, that that person may have and you don't know them. So what it ends up is having this multiplication of uh, S hidden uh, states times the multiplication of T uh, vis visible states that depends on the hidden uh, parents, right? So this is very similar to this model over here in which my observable depends on some hidden state that I don't know which one is it. And then the hidden depends on other hidden states. So in this case, that hidden state is uh, independent from each other. So we just simplify the, this model. So these are my symptoms, my visible symptoms. And these are my hidden uh, diseases, right? Okay, so this is one way of representing the, the information within the models. And we can have also another way uh, it is called plate notation that is, it ends up like a syntactic sugar, you know? So this plate notation, it just uh, help you to represent complex models. For instance, if I have the disjoint from theta and D, uh, for instance, this, this can be a P theta, uh, the multiplication of one, one up to N, and the probability of Xi, given theta, right? So I have some some prior and this prior um, model my, my data. So I will have a lot of different XIs and different XI that I will need to draw. So the, the, this is kind of really complex, right? Because I will need to do something like this. Theta, and then I will need to do my X1, X2, and so on up to Xn. And then just draw all of them, right? So instead of doing this, I can simply try to factor it, you know, and say, for instance, like, you know, there is some Xi here that depends on this theta, but this Xi, I have N of these. So now I, I can just quickly write that, that particular uh, function, right? So for instance, I can also have another one that is um, I joint over here of X and Y, and this is, um, my multi-class classification, right, that we had before. So it is just the multiplication of every single sample and the probability of being a particular class, let's call it um, yi, given some prior, prior parameter, p, pi, and the multiplication of every single uh, feature up to the features and uh, the multiplication of every class, right? Up to C classes. And this is the probability of XJ given my YI and my parameter for the uh, J future as class C times the prior of, of that parameter, right? So this is the, one of those uh, models that we used before, right? So if I try to use this in, in this particular plate notation, this is still quite complex, not saying like in the normal um, graphical model. So for instance, I can start with some pi over here 
and this pi uh, works over a, over a y. And this y, I will have a lot of different xi, one, xi, um, how, it, how did I call it, d? Yeah, up to d, and these conditions, these, right? And then at the same time, each of these xi, it is conditioned through a theta uh, one class C up to theta uh, D class C, right? And these condition these. And now I have how many of these? So I will have uh, some amount of C of these, right? Because I have C classes. This is a capital C and this is a small C. And then for these guys over here, I have n samples, right? Because the y's and the x's come from the same bag. And I have n of these. So this is still quite, quite uh, complex and convoluted. So another way of trying to simplify this is using nested plates. And we can just try to nest them and try to infer the, the context from them. So this pi, for instance, it just conditions a y. And this y conditions an x, uh, how did I call it? An, an x uh, ij, right? An x ij. So this is, sorry, I'm missing an i here. Um, because it is the i sample and it, it's j uh, feature. And it happens that this x ij is also conditioned on these uh, thetas, right? In these thetas jc. So what do we, what do we have here, right? I have my xi's again as before, so I have n of these guys, and simultaneously for the j's here, I have d of those, right? So I have d d j's uh, over here. So in this case, it, it is kind of uh, infer how many of, of those I have, and then I'm still having. Uh, C of these uh, J's, right? Because I have C classes over here. And this is the difference between nested and and, um, uh, and the normal uh, plane notation and also from the normal graph. So this is just syntactic sugar. We will be keep using them in the in the next parts, okay?